Welcome back everyone. We've got our GATM3 in our development area. Now, you've probably seen that we've already got scans of the car, which we did on an M4 previously. However, one of the good things about having our own car is that when we need to, we can bring it back and we can take more scan data whenever we need to. So now we're going to do some more scans because I realize there's a few more details I need in the intake system. So I'm gonna set the scanner up and I'm gonna get scanning. <laughs> So I've removed the stock airbox system from the car. We'll have a quick look at the, the stock airboxes and the tubes. So this is from the right side of the car, as, as lo looking at from the engine bay. So where are we? So this is how it sits in the engine bay. Coal air is fed from the duct. We actually pulls it in from here because there's no actual forced feed. Um, and obviously you've got your output from the top. There's a panel filter inside, which is typical paper panel filter. It's not huge in size inside, but the good thing is the outlet looks like a good size on the airbox. Um, one thing interesting on this side is over here, you can see there's an opening in the back of the airbox to relieve possibly some excess pressure building up inside there. Um, this is, that opening is not on the other side, so it's probably due to the fact that on the right side, the airflow is having to negotiate a sharper bend from the outlet to the inlet of, uh, of flow. So they've probably done that to release some of that pressure. Okay, so I'll put that down. The tube, which it connects to is this. Um, it's got three sections which are flexible. Good thing again is, which is different to the F80, it's a lot larger in uh, diameter to the F80. It does taper in to the turbo, but it maintains a pretty decent size. So, so that's pretty good, good for flow. Um, the way it secures to the turbo inlet is with a spring clip, which is the same on both sides. Apart from that, there's not much else to say in this. It's not a bad design in terms of tubes. Uh, there's no sharp bends as such. A few flexible sections, but that's about it. But yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, let's look at the other side. So the other side. So on the left side, the airbox similar, but looks like the outlet is actually smaller on this side and it's actually oval shaped compared to the other side and then they've got no additional openings in the airbox apart from where it connects to the front duct. Similar size filter inside again, paper filter, but uh, yeah, I think smaller in terms of volume compared to the other side. And the tube which that connects to is this one. So in the car, it's like, it's like that. So it's having to do a, quite a complex bend there to get into the airbox. Again, spring clip onto the turbo inlet and it looks like it's smaller. So if we compare these two, yeah, definitely. So the left side is a lot smaller in the inlet to the right side. And that actually continues on to the airbox connection. So if you look at the comparison between the two, left side again is smaller to the uh, longer tube and it's oval in shape. So a couple of things we can probably straight away try to improve is make both sides equal in terms of volume and diameter on the tube side anyway. And then hopefully we can see if we can uh, redesign the actual inlets to the turbo because typically that's where a lot of restriction lies. Um, quite interesting actually in this car is that the turbo inlet on the left side is in cast aluminium. And that's probably because it's very, very close to the exhaust gases, the, the exhaust manifold. So that side is going to get very hot. Compared to the other side, which is a plastic inlet, um, that 
inlet on the left side, on the sorry, on the right side, which is in plastic, also has some sort of sensor attached to it. So we'll have to have a look at that and see see what that is and how we can uh, try and improve. But there's definitely space on this side to to make things bigger. So we can start with that. But let's uh, let's get the scanner going and we start scanning the extra data we need. So we've finished the additional scan. I'm going to now take that data back upstairs to my computer. So we've shown you some of the scan process and how it is collected. Um, we're going to now take you back upstairs, show you the actual scan itself and explain how we're going to develop the, uh, the intake system. So the scans are done. I have now imported all the scans into my software. It's a huge, huge file. Um, I've done multiple scans so that I have the freedom of moving and removing um, data points to have better visibility. So let me show you now the full scan assembly of the G80M3 on my screen. So this is everything um, that I've scanned. You can see the strut brace. We're looking at the engine from the top down. So let's have a quick look. So I'm now using my 3D mouse, which someone in a previous video recommended, and it is absolutely amazing. Should have got this ages ago. So let's go from the from the left side. Um, I've already moved the removed the stock air boxes, so you can see the space available. You can see where the intake would draw cold air in from. You can see the the, the duct, which I'll or that one. That, that's the duct area which the stock air box draws air in from. Okay, so the good thing about this system is that you can actually see the turbos. So on the left side, I'll zoom in to where the turbo is. Okay, right there you can see the, the impeller of the turbo. Um, it is quite close to that heat shield on the side, but there's still enough space to to develop something of a larger size. Um, obviously, if there's your space, you can see the wheel arch area. You can see the the duct, and the top is a strut brace. So that's the envelope in which we've got to work in. Um, the other turbo is right there. You can't see the the impeller because of the angle of the scan, but um, you can clearly see the, the, the outer casing of where the turbo inlet would mount. And let's just rotate this around a little bit so you can see the path of the tube. So the tube would then go underneath that strut brace and across. The screen's just trying to catch up. Okay, and then on the right side, similar sort of um, space as on the left side, but obviously now the airflow has to come through that lower duct, up and around, and then into the long tube. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you 
the underside of the bonnet. So I actually did scan the, the underside of the bonnet, or the hood, as some of you may call it. I'll bring that up now. So what you're seeing now, that panel is the underside of the bonnet when it's closed. Um, and you can see inside, there's quite a decent amount of clearance between that underside and you can see the strut brace. So there's quite a lot of clearance above that strut brace to the other side of the bonnet. Similarly on the other side as well. Let's pan that across. There you go. So that's a good thing. Um, lots of space, lots of clearance. I'm not too concerned now of the underside of that bonnet catching on the intakes because there's loads of space there. So now that I've shown you the scans, we're going to move on and start developing the intake system. Uh, we're going to go from the turbo onwards, so we'll create the inlets and then the piping and then the filter housings and so on. Uh, we will try and use as much volume as possible in the given space. Um, it is a shame that we can't make scoops to be part of the system because you have to remove the bumpers, you have to modify the panels, and I'm sure not everyone wants to do that on a brand new car. So we'll do those, do those as an optional extra. Um, but we will start with the intake, show you how we get on. Um, so the next video will give you a bit more of an insight into the development process and the design features of the intake. And uh, so we'll, we'll go from there. So just follow us on this channel. We'll show you our development and our design features. So just stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you want to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.